Hi, it's Kelly and welcome back to Me More TV. Um, today's video is all about Ayurveda and I'm really, really pleased to have one of my dearest friends with me here today, Anita Korshul, who is also the co-founder of Morley Rituals. Darling, tell me what Ayurveda is. Right, so Ayurveda is an old 5,000 year old healing system from India. It basically advocates that we're all connected, like our brand is. Morley says that everything is connected. And it's the connection of mind, body, and soul. So when we think about beauty, in Ayurveda, we don't think about beauty as a purely physical thing, although that's one part of it. We think that beauty comes from paying equal attention to mind, body, and soul, and that we are connected to all that is. I don't mean that in a woo-woo way. I mean that we are all part of the elemental makeup that surrounds us. So the, that tree outside is the same energy that I have here, right? But some of us have more of one energy than another. So have you ever heard of somebody being described as quite fiery? Yes. That is their elemental makeup, right? Or you might fire. say fire. Or you might say somebody's very grounded. Yes. Oh, he's a very grounded person. Uh, because his energy is earth and water, predominantly. You might hear, maybe one of your children you would describe as grounded. Maybe one of Kelly's children. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so this is a person who's made of the energy of water and earth predominantly. Or you may hear of somebody being described as a bit of an airhead. Mm -hmm. They're the energy of air and ether. So when you understand what ele elemental makeup you are, you know how to work with it rather than against it. So a person who is a fire energy, you wouldn't put fire out with a fire, right? So quite simply, it's, it's, it's so intuitive and simple that... With that person, you want to give them cooling food. You want to use cooling products because they are already very heated. Okay, so that is... That's so, your dosha. Okay, that's your dosha. Yeah. So when you talk about mind, body, soul, yeah. and that is your... That incorporates... Your dosha incorporates all of that. Yeah, your dosha incorporates all of that. And what, what Ayurveda is all about is prevention as opposed to cure. So what we do is... In the West, we will go to a doctor and say, oh, I have, a, I have a knee pain. And the doctor will perhaps recommend surgery or perhaps give you antibiotics or something. What we would say in Ayurveda is, where did that begin? Because it probably didn't begin in the knee. So we are not going to treat the knee. We're going to treat the source of that pain. Yes. And that's the fundamental difference. We're always going for prevention rather than cure. And... We believe that why we have these problems is because of too much armor, too much toxin in our body. So again, that toxin impacts on your skin, it impacts on your mind, and one can have mind toxins. I think that's a very um, Absolutely. you know, 20th century problem is that we are so full of thought, too much bombardment of thought, that that creates bodily toxins, which then creates disease, that's right? So we again go back to, okay, what is causing that mind problem? And that's what we treat rather than putting the pl plaster on a physical problem, because that's never going to help. Or it's a short-term thing that will feed the pharmacies, but it's not going to feed us. We got interested in this partly because I've grown up with it, partly because Bitch's father is an Ayurvedic doctor, and we see him at 86. He's full of energy. He bounces out of the, the house. He plays tennis every morning. He does yoga. He meditates. Very positive attitude because he practices Ayurveda. And the older that I am getting, the more I'm realizing that if I want true health in my older age, I need to follow that route. So to follow that route, mm -hmm. I guess first you have to find out what you are. So I've just done your dosha quiz, which we have on our website as well. This is yours, Kelly. Um, and what we find is most people have a predominant dosha and a sub dosha, and they can be very close in in the numbers, if you like. The really true way to determine somebody's dosha is you have a consultation. You'll sit and you'll look at how they speak, you'll look at their eyes, you'll look at them physically, you'll look at them the way they react when you're talking to them, you look at are they fidgety or are they very still, or most importantly, we look at your pulse. Because the pulse never lies, really, unless you've had a vodka, then it does lie. <laughs> but you know, you look at your pulse. And on our site, we have a questionnaire, which gives you a really good indication. So Kelly, I've asked you some questions on the questionnaire, and you, like most people, are a predominant and a sub -dosha. You're predominantly pitta. It's very close. Your physical makeup is pitta. And then second is vata. But they're so close that you need to keep an eye on them because they could change slightly based on the seasons. 
we are all more of one than the other in a particular season, what's going on in our life. What are the doshas? So the three doshas are vata, pitta and kapha. Vata is air and ether and it controls the nervous system in the body. And this is an energy that's very fast and quick and very creative. Pitta is the energy of fire and water. So this is the energy that is very sharp, very focused and very ambitious. And then you have kapha, which is like the glue that binds them together. This is uh, the water and earth. And these people are very compassionate and kind. They take longer to learn, but once they learn, they never forget. They're very forgiving, but they don't forget. So all these three doshas will suit different lifestyles. So vata is best suiting to warming cooked foods. Pitta is best suited to raw foods that are cooling. And kapha, again, is warm foods, um, cooked foods. So once you know your dosha, yeah. then you look at bringing in the Ayurveda way of eating. Yeah. And that then yeah. complements your dosha. Yeah, exactly. And so you've got food. What else can you do to complement? Uh, the, the type of exercise you do. We're not all suited to hit, for instance. Uh, meditation is a big part of Ayurveda. Proper breathing. We don't focus enough on our breath. That's super important. Um, you know, the nostril breathing is really important in one, out the other. Uh, it what really cle it clears the, uh, the passage and it releases toxins from the body. And it's a simple thing you can do in the morning. Anyone can do it. Everyone should do it, including children. And the more that you practice Ayurveda and the more you do, the more you want to do. And one key aspect of Ayurveda is, of course, as we say, food. And it's to not overeat. So in the West, we've been brought up on snacking because that's fueled a whole snack industry. Mm -hmm. And in Ayurveda, we say, no, you eat when you are hungry. And your last meal should probably be about seven in the evening. So you give your body a 14-hour fast. We don't even believe in breakfast. We say, if you don't feel hungry, don't eat till 11. Don't eat till brunch. Well, this is, this is big at the moment, this yeah. whole intermit intermittent yeah. um, fasting. Yeah. And... It's something called um, autophagy. Have right, I've never heard of that. No, no, but I think it's it's very much, it brings into it, it's when the body detoxifies and yes. it starts to renew itself. Absolutely. And they say, I think it's 14 to 16 now. It's, Absolutely. And it's something I've just started doing, which yeah. I'm loving. Great. And just sort of, I can feel the body feels different with that. So bringing that into your everyday life, mm -hmm. is that a conscious fasting there? Or it is, again, eat when you... It's not a conscious fasting. It's just something we do. This is... This is what we find funny in, uh, in the East is that we've done the 5-2 for always because it makes sense. But in the East, we don't call it fasting. We, we give that day over to some energy that's bigger than us. So, for instance, my mother would fast for the goddess Lakshmi, who is the goddess of abundance. Mm. So all day she might just have fruit on that day, nothing else, or nothing at all on another day. Uh, it was to give the body a rest, of course. It was to for us to appreciate what we have rather than gorging on food. Uh, but we did it in the name of an energy. We never called it the 5-2. We called it common sense. I love that. It was I common love. sense. Uh, so the, the, fa the fasting that we now give the body a break at night, again, it's just common sense. How can you sleep on a, a full stomach mm. and then wake up and be eating again? That, it doesn't make any sense. But, of course, people who wanted to sell breakfast cereal and muffins and waffles and had to make us believe that we needed to eat first thing in the morning. We didn't. So, you know, in the beauty industry, yeah. Ayurveda, I mm -hmm. mean, everyone's talking about it now. And, you know, I love your products. I love Morally Rituals. I love what it stands for. I love where it's come from. So tell me how you've incorporated that into into what you do? So a big part of Ayurveda is oils. We use oils because we must lubricate the skin internally. We all know that what we put in the skin, on the skin goes in the skin. So I have grown up with massage. It wasn't considered a luxury, it was considered a necessity. So massage, both of hair, because if you don't have a healthy scalp, you cannot grow good hair. So Indian head massage is fundamental. Bodily massage is fundamental. And of course, on your skin as well, oil. All my mother ever used was oil on her skin. And she has skin like a baby. So our beauty products, for want of a better word, are all pretty much oil-based. And on every product that we produce, we look at, okay, how does it impact here, 
here and here. So it's, we, again, look at physical, emotional, spiritual. So we use therapeutic oils because they have an impact on, on your mood. We use very rich actives because they impact on a cellular level and rejuvenate your skin. And we want them to feel good. So they feel good on the skin. So we tackle all three. And unless we have a product that has all three, we don't bring it out. One of your newer products, the Himalayan Salt Scrub. Yeah. I mean, I, I, am, I am Morley Ritual's <laughs> biggest fan. I, I, love, I love the products. I mean, the skin serum I use around my eyes and I just put yeah. some on my neck too. I mean, they're just so hydrating. They're light, they're beautiful, they smell lovely. But I know the salts that I've just started using, mm. how my skin is mm. afterwards yeah. and how it penetrates. Um, but that's also part of that Ayurveda. It's, it's the scrubbing, isn't mm -hmm. it, of the body? Big part. And Big removing part. toxins? Or... Big part. If you go to an Ayurvedic retreat and you have panchkarma, which is like proper detox, proper, proper detox, you will be having a body scrub. You will probably have one every day. You'll have massage every day. So once the body is scrubbed and you're releasing all that dead energy, you'll have a good massage to then again, lubricate the skin and the internal organs, that more importantly, this intermittent fasting, like we said, you will have a scalp massage and you will have herbs. We say that everything you need for the skin is in your kitchen. So we have these superfoods we've produced for uh, the three different doshas. So for Vata, it's brain and beauty booster, because that's what, they have memory fog. When they're tired, Vata, that, that Vata person will find it very hard to think uh, and to remember and to string a sentence together. So we have brain and beauty for them. We have strength and spirit for kapha because when they're out of balance, they get very lethargic and emotionally very down. And then we have transform and transcend for pitta, which is to give energy and strength. These are all from the kitchen. Everything that's in them is from the kitchen. And do you take it with water as a, as a powder is it a, or do yeah. you put it on your food? or Whatever you like. Yeah, it's a super powder. So you can put it on your cereal, you can put it on your pizza, in your salad. I like to have it with a spoon of honey because it's a powder. So the honey binds it very quickly, easily. So I with have water mine. or not? Or no, just... just with a spoon of honey. Oh. Sometimes with water, I'll shake the water and have it at my desk throughout the day. But however you want to. And how often would you have that? Uh, every day. Every once a day? Thing, once a day, every day. So why, why would people choose Morley? You know, I think there's a resonance with the brand and I don't kind of worry about why people choose it. I think the people who appreciate uh, natural beauty and who appreciate real quality will find us. And when we started the business, honestly, and you know this, Kelly, we didn't have a plan. It wasn't like a grand plan. It was just a, we're going to put our life and soul and love into this and then see where it takes us. And I feel just the same today, you know, and so why are we different? Why would people find us? I think it's for people to discover and, you know, if it resonates, then they will. Of course, it's all natural. Of course, it's high in actives. The product being brilliant is just a given for me. It's a given. I wouldn't put anything out there you've that was not... You've sourced it. You've gone and you've got the rose yeah. petals from India. Yeah. And... In our perfumes, we wrap them in dried rose petals that we get from temples in India. This is really heartfelt brand. And I think when you're gifting somebody something, if there's thought behind it, it carries the energy of that woman who went to the temple. She or he gave it to the temple. The priest blessed it. Another stranger came and picked them up. They made their way here to you via us. And we are all connected by that energy and that thread. And Morley actually means it's the name of the thread that I'm wearing. And it's um, that we are all connected. That's what it means on so many levels. So... Uh, everything is made in the UK. And Most of the people who uh, make uh, we buy product from, raw materials are soil association approved. Uh, and it's all natural and organic. This is one thing I just love. And also being your friend and having attended many of mm. your rituals, um, I love the Morley and the thought of the blessing and when yeah. you tie it and you can have, you can attach some of your own love and Absolutely. kindness to that person. Yeah. And that's what you say about a thread connecting us all. Absolutely. So where can we find Morley? You can find Morley at Space NK on Netta Porter. You can find Morley in the Bulgari Spa. We have treatments there. Uh, of course, our own website, in which London. is morleyrituals.com. Bulgari in London, if you happen to be in Milan, you can find uh, Morley there. Uh, you can find Morley in some nice little independence, uh, also on 
uh, sites around the world, small independents around the world, but uh, on, in space and at a porter worldwide and on our site worldwide. And you ship worldwide? We ship worldwide, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Soon to go into your neck of the woods in Australia, right? Oh, my yeah. friends will be so happy. <laughs> Anita, thank you for joining me today. I, I love being with you no matter what, but I, I just you. I love sharing what you're passionate about and learning more about Ayurveda. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, I do lots of other videos on beauty, paleo, and lifestyle. You can find me on social media at memore.tv and please subscribe.